Welcome to Fruiting Body Podcast, and today we're with Anna Kessler. Anna is an OnlyFans uh, creator and an IG influencer, and today this story is going to be epic. We're going to get all the information about what's going on in OnlyFans, how people have transitioned into this, and the thought process behind being an IG influencer. Um, well, I'm your host, Brendan O'Neill, and this is Fruiting Body Podcast. We are Fruiting Body Mushrooms. We'll have product coming out shortly, but hey, let's talk about that later. Talise Kip. Uh, one quick thing we found an amazing feature on youtube you should check this out if you're watching this video uh and you click on any time place on the video itself click on the description and chapters will appear from these chapters you can decide what part of the podcast you would like to watch hope you enjoy we have a special giveaway one month one time uh anna has been kind enough to give this away um as long as you're not super creepy and and weird and annoying um then it's fine but we will if this video gets uh 100 likes uh leave a message on the youtube in the comments we'll be selecting a winner uh in the next couple probably at the end of the month because this will take about a week before we we launch this we'll be selecting a winner and that person will get a free month's subscription to her only fans uh, so we're going to jump right into this quickly with Anna Kessler. Anna is currently living in Phuket. She's going to tell you her life story, and we're going to start at the beginning. So first, thanks, Anna, for joining us today. Um, I don't know if you're expecting this studio experience. It's a bit crazier probably than you anticipated. Um, but we want to start at the very beginning, and let's start from your, your childhood. Where are your parents from? Where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so. As we all know, my name is Anna. Um, I was born and lived in Russia for 14 years. And then I moved to China. And then from China, I moved here to Phuket. And I currently live here for five years, almost five years. Five years now. Yes. And you're now we were talking on, on the phone before. And here, I'll help you. You probably want to push this up a little bit so then your neck can go back. Don't worry. We adjust everyone throughout the process. That's okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay. We're good. Um, and we were talking about it before. Now you said your uh, your your father's from Mongolia, or is your mom your is mother's from, from Mongolia. Mongolia and your father's My from Germany? My dad is German. How did how did they meet? My dad's family moved to Russia a while ago, so they're all German, and they've met in university, I, I guess. But I don't really know my real dad. I live okay. I live with my stepdad since very beginning since, since you were since a child. i know yeah as long as i remember yeah he was he was nearby and you're you're growing up in, in uh russia which city uh in siberia novosibirsk yeah omsk or novosibirsk like the sibirsk okay yeah i'm this an i'm an ice hockey player so i play with a lot of you these crazy siberian <laughs> russians they come up to bangkok and like they're absolute animals. I've but. never been to Bangkok. Everyone yeah. is talking like yeah. I've never been to Bangkok. Yeah, these yeah the, these uh, Siberian Russian players they're absolute animals. But so you're you're living in Siberia up until the age of fourteen. Yeah. And then your stepfather uh, decided to move to China. Did you move with the whole family? You have brothers. You have sisters. Yeah, I do have a brother and two more sisters, mm -hmm. but my mom when we were moving from China to here, she was pregnant. So she gave birth to my little brother here already and we decided to stay here. In Phuket or in China? In Phuket. Oh, okay, in Phuket. Um, so we both lived in Shenzhen. We were talking about that before, but uh, you're not speaking. You didn't pick up any Chinese. You got to Shenzhen, Shenzhen Direct at age 14? Uh, kind of. I went there a couple of times before, like at the age of 10 and 11, yeah. I think. And then I just moved there for a while, like, almost a year and then from there we decided to go on vacation to Phuket ah. and since my mom was very pregnant as we say um, she decided to give birth to a child here and yep. then I was um, homeschooled so I kind of needed like socialization so we decided to push me into the school and in, I didn't in Phuket in Phuket yeah okay. international school 
And when I came here, I didn't speak a word of English. <laughs> really? And you didn't really, you weren't able to pick it up living in China? Not really. Okay. In, you know, in Shenzhen, people don't really speak English. It's all in Chinese. Yeah. And the only thing that helps you, it's Google Translate. Not even Google Translate yeah. because Google, Google doesn't work there. So Were you going to school in, while you were in China as well? Uh, homeschooled. Homeschooled, okay. Homeschooled, all in Russian. And yeah. then I came here. Don't know anything except for, hello, how are you? Mm. I'm fine, thank you. My name is Anna. Bye. Yeah. And then I went to school and it kind of like pushed me to the wall. So I eventually started to speak English. And since, I'm, since I've never heard the Russian accent before, like mm. I don't really have this weird Russian accent. I can make it up. Yeah, but it's yeah, but you, you sound pretty neutral. Yeah, it's like a neutral type of thing because yeah. I went to American curriculum school, but we had a lot of teachers like from... Australia, from um, UK, Which US, school did you go to in... Uh, QSI. QSI, okay. Yeah, they also have a they have a branch in, in Shenzhen as well. In Shenzhen, and yeah. Because my friends that were stuck here, one of them was a teacher at QSI. And anyway, so that's a side story. But um, so you went you went to QSI, and this is probably predominantly where you picked up pick speaking English. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I went to another school before, but then eventually I have found something that I like because... I don't know. I went to a smaller school first and then I moved to QSI, which is not a big school also, but it was bigger than the previous one and I loved it a lot. I graduated from there, so I'm really But still an about it's it. an international school, right? Yeah, so but it's more like a since the school is very small, teachers are paying a lot of attention to each student, so you're picking up more knowledge yeah. from studying. So the classroom yeah, sizes the are... The classroom are cool. sizes are like five, six people only. So how long did it take you to... At, at this point when you're getting into the international schools, your English is, hi, hello, I'm fine, how are you? How quickly were you able to kind of transition to uh, being able to communicate at this level? Because, I mean, your English is... It's it's good. Thanks. Um, well, I think I it took me like half a year to properly understand what people are saying since I've never heard um english speaking people like properly mm. talking to me even though we have english school like language schools in russia yeah it's not that Obvi good. yeah if you're not practicing it if you're not using it you're gonna lose it yeah so i knew a lot of words but i just was uh, really afraid to speak and mm. then people were just pushing me really hard to like stand up in front of the class and talk and mm -hmm. yeah so that really helps that at, really helped me. Like, at this point, now you gr you graduate high school. Um, what was the next step for you? Did you go into university? Did you start working? So um, on the last year of high school, I started to apply to different universities all over the world because I didn't really... I knew what I want to study, but I didn't know where. So for me, it was like, I'm kind of searching. Mm-hmm going with the flow and stuff like that and at that situation was march 2020 so my parents uh went on the visa run to malaysia yeah and they got stuck there for nine months okay um so this is in that <laughs> process of figuring out where where you're gonna study um yeah me graduating from high school yeah. Uh, me trying to apply to different universities, getting messages and stuff like that, deciding about my future life. And at this time, my parents get stuck in a different country for nine months. I end up here with three kids. Oh, wow. So I'm here alone <laughs> under the age of 18. Yeah. And you're <laughs> watching You're watching your brothers and sisters. I'm watching my brothers and sisters. Yeah. I'm trying to graduate from school. Um, yeah. yeah, that was a really tough time. And and is that still, are your parents back? Are you still kind of watching your brothers and sisters or what's going on? My parents are back through quarantine. They went back last year. Okay. So that went pretty good. But yeah, it really affected my education since I got stuck in Thailand and I couldn't move anywhere. Um, I've decided to go to Thai University. Yep. Which isn't bad. I mean, it's just not the faculty that I wanted. That's Was that the decision because of uh, the C word or the current situation? Was that the decision to stay here? Would you have liked to go to, you were talking about go to Canada or maybe the U.S. Uh, for uh, architecture and design? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the situation at that time, 
It was collected the fact that I couldn't move anywhere, the fact that my parents are in a different country, Mm -hmm. and the fact that the financial situation was not that good, Mm -hmm. again, because of the situation back then. Yeah, it kind of all together made us think that we want to stay here for longer. Like my my parents wanted to move from here back to China or to Australia. We we're still deciding, but I don't know. We kind of decided that this is the safest place to stay right now. Yeah, because no one knows what's going to happen. It's quite uncertain. So, um, yeah, it's it's not a it's not a bad option. So now you're you're in high school and you're studying what exactly? Hospitality. Hospitality. Um, let's talk about that a bit. How is that experience, especially? I'm assuming you, you, well, we talked about this, so I'm assuming you, you, your tie is obviously uh, not at a, a high level. Um, what is it like, you know, being a non-native speaker of, of the, the mother of Thailand in a Thai university? Okay, can we be pretty realistic here, right? I think you, we can just be fair and honest about it all. Because uh, okay. uh, I don't think we're going to cross any certain lines there. I think that's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, as we all know, Phuket, uh, even Thai people say it, Phuket is not Thailand. Uh, mm. It's more like a tourist place. So people are here are used to be very welcoming and like no one ever mentioned that Thai people can be racist. Okay. So I've ended up in a situation when I'm the only one foreigner in my year. Like everyone else is Thai and I'm the only one since I'm Mongolian and German, the, the a half Asian. Yeah. yeah, but non-Thai. Um we had like a couple of Chinese students, but they came there for like one semester or something. So the first semester was amazing. It was perfect because everyone treated me like a queen. I was like a little star there mm. um, because everyone thought I'm an exchange student. And the second semester, when people realized that I'm actually staying here, I'm not going to move anywhere, um, university became a hell. What, do you have like a specific example of a time when? Yeah, it happened around January, like middle of January. This year? This year. Okay, 2021, uh, yeah. 2021. Um, it was absolutely crazy. People just started to like ignore me, not wanting to be in a group project. Um, I was thinking that I'm doing something wrong. And then I had my group of people that are that know who I am and like they really like me. So we were like kind of together, like a small group. And then they started to, like, tell me the stuff that they're posting a lot of bullshit about mm-hmm. me on social media, on Facebook, talking behind my back. And at first, I just didn't care. Like, the best way to deal with haters, just ignore them. Yeah. They don't get attention back. They they stop doing something. But at some point, I almost got beaten up. Okay. Did they... Yeah. they um, uh, come up to you and, and, and intimidate you or is there anything at that that was type just of level? a really weird situation they were trying to blame me in in everything like whatever happens even though it was like there was a situation when a teacher left the class because some of the students refused to wear masks and sit away from each other mm-hmm. and at that time i was in uh, in a bad situation my friend in, back in russia died from the C word from the, the C current word. current situation, yeah. Um, and I was allowed to wear black uh, shirt as a uniform since we have a white shirt usually. We're wearing uniform, by the way, in yep. university. So I was allowed to wear the black one, and basically the teacher left the class, and they were all just like turn around to me and say, "It's your fault because you're wearing black." And I'm like, he clearly made it like him. He explained that he yeah. left the class because you refused to wear a mask and sit separately. And they were just like, it was a lot of situations like this. So it's, It sounds a bit strange because, I mean, from my, my university education and, and many others, it almost sounds like it's almost like a high school mentality in there instead of a university mentality. I was Whoa. expecting more, to be honest. Why do you think that that, that is? Is it a, an issue with like people just being immature? Is it a thing of racism? Or do you notice this immaturity uh, across most of the younger ties in the university? I cannot say if this is just those people or the entire 
I don't know, atmosphere in university because some people grow up very fast and some people stay in this like childhood, teenage situation for a while. So I was that type of person who grew up very fast because of the situation with my parents. I was taking care of my kids and stuff. Mm. Um, I was I was like a proper adult already. And I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, it'd be a... I, I understand. And I think... Um, the listeners as well can understand that part of the story. Um, I actually didn't expect it to be like that because the way you are explaining it seems a bit more like a high school mentality, which is strange at a university level because people are paying and you're focused on your education. Um, so you're still at, at the school and uh, now you, you, you've you taken, or what's going on exactly? So this semester I took an academic break but it was more like an excuse for my parents that, okay, if you don't have to pay <coughs> for it because we don't we have like really bad financial situation. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm on my own. Like I'm paying all of my bills by myself. The only thing that my parents were paying for is my university. Yeah. So now that they're not paying for it, I'm fully independent. And to be honest, I feel much better. And it was a really long discussion. It was throughout the entire summer that we were talking about this. We were fighting. We were, like, messing around, trying to escape this topic many times. But eventually, I can say I won because mm. I didn't want to come back there. Mostly not even because of the bullying that much. Because I don't really care. I go there for education. But because a lot of... We used to have a lot of foreigner teachers there. And when the situation, this difficulty yeah. started, they all moved out from Thailand. So now we ended up with badly <laughs> English-speaking Thai teachers that cannot explain anything. Just in the middle of the class, they can switch to Thai like this. And then there's nothing you can do about it. There that. is nothing you can do about it. And what about the textbooks? They're all in English? Um, most of the classes don't have textbooks. Strange. We only had one class, which was the... Um, beverage and cooking that had mm. textbooks. Everything else didn't have a single textbook. Usually it's just a PowerPoint presentation that the teacher prepares by themselves. And is it like that just for your course, like hospitality, or is it for everything? For everyone. Engineering, there's no textbooks. Mm, Strange. I think there are some textbooks or like uh, some kind of, mm. I don't know, guide for computer classes but that's it most of the time just give you a link to youtube videos like study by yourself do whatever you want very, very simplified test. maybe because the the these uh uh farang teachers were there and there is a, probably a bit more structure um who are the majority of the thais at the school is it mostly from phuket is it from all over thailand mostly po from phuket province but not from the phuket like the city a lot I cannot call it city because it's just a small town. The whole island. Yeah, but it's entire island all the way to the mainland. Mm. Um, we had some people from small villages a little bit more to the north. But yeah, that's it. Most, most, mostly people are from Thailand, from, the, from the Phuket area. Is it, um, if you don't mind sharing, what, like what is the cost per semester or per year to go to a Thai university in, let's say, Bot? Okay, so I can say it in American dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so the average for Prince of Songkla University, is where I go to, yeah. is about uh, $1,300 per semester okay. to 1500 1600 something like this. So it's very cheap comparing to U.S. or to Europe, but, you know, that if it costs less it's probably something you kind of the quality of it you get what you pay for right yeah type of thing kind so of. what if this situation was uh, was better i mean what is ideal for you are you let's say tomorrow the, the world opens up would you stay here would you leave what would your plans be i would try to to be honest, I thought about it a lot, like too much. That's why I have like too many thoughts in my head. But I would probably try to move. Uh, not because I don't like this place. I love Thailand. I love Phuket a lot because it became my home. Mm -hmm. And just because I want something more, I think I'm getting like 
I'm squeezing all of it already. Like I have the last drops of this energy that I could get from here. I want something new. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind to study online since mm. my course, you can study it online. Uh, the architecture and design, it's all in computers. It's the online classes. It's completely possible. But if, if you had that, uh, that option to, let's say you were financed or... Uh, to go anywhere in the in the world and do go to any university that you wanted that you can get into as well and you could make that decision and f the finance wasn't an issue um, and again the world is open this is a hypothetical scenario what where is your dream place where would you love to go where would you love to study Netherlands Netherlands why is that I don't know I I've had a friend who moved to Amsterdam and we're still talking kind of and she was saying that as soon as I moved there, it's like a completely different world. At the same time, I don't, I feel like um, Canada is my place, not even the US, but it's too far from my family. And I really want to like keep in touch with them to be able to like come over for holidays or whatever. Yeah, the time zone is pretty, uh, I'm from Canada and it's insane. It's like uh, 13 hours. So it's it's very difficult to even communicate I mean, you're calling in your morning and their night and vice versa. Yeah, so for example, my grandparents from my mom's side are still in Siberia and we're in the same time zone, so... It makes it easy. Yeah, so it's very easy. For my friends from Europe, it's very difficult because I'm waking up in the morning. Yeah. Uh, usually I have to wake up at like 5, 6 so I can call them or the opposite. They have to stay like very <coughs> late at night. So we're trying. It's all possible. It just depends on how far you want to go. Mm. Well, yeah, that could could be the option of if things opened up and going to Netherlands. But with the current situation, who knows? Let's see. Um, to kind of to segue into the, the next part of the, discu the discussion, um, you're going to university and, and you're 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 going through this process for the past uh, year or so, um, and you're also briefly explaining your working in Phuket as well. Um, I, I'm not sure where you want to start with that, uh, of how your initial work came about and what you've been doing and, and, and kind of just take it from there. Okay, so when I started to go to university, I moved to the dorm, uh, mm -hmm. which is like basically a really big place where you stay really close to university, basically across the road. And you're sharing a room with people? I was sharing a room, yeah, with a girl. Um, at that time, I felt such a freedom because my parents never allowed me to go to Bangla Road. Never, I have never drank before that. Yeah. Uh, even though it was legal, kind of. I cannot buy alcohol, but I can drink it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just started to go out to Bangla Road every Friday, Saturday. And just having a lot of fun. I've met a Wh Which boy. time was this around? Uh, it was 2020 still? 2020, August. August. So the I Late think. August of 2020. But at this point, uh, most of Bangla is closed, right? Only a select Only few. Only select yeah. Select few places but are going. Likely for me, they were my favorite places. Okay. So I started to go out a lot, met a, new, a lot of new people. And my passion throughout the life was dancing mm -hmm. i am dancing since i'm two years old professionally so i used to do ballet i used to do contemporary hip-hop vog uh the only thing i didn't try was break dance i even okay. do the pole dancing i tried everything just dancing it is and i was starting to think maybe i would love to try dancing on the stage so we have this option in the clubs um of course, we have dancers there, but at some point, dancers are gone, and MCs, people who are talking to you from the stage, yep. they start to drag people on the stage so you can dance and show off. And I was really afraid of it before, and then I tried, and I loved it, and then I tried again, and I kind of started to push myself to go there every time it happens, and... It just gave me so much pleasure and it was like it was like euphoria moment. And I started to think maybe I should try to apply and like do something about it. 
But since it was this like difficult times, everything was already booked, people are stable, no one wants to like fire anyone. It was like, okay, we can try later. And then eventually, in like a couple of months, closer to New Year, um, I got a chance to work in the biggest club on Bangla Road, which is Illusion. Yep. Um, and I was just happy to any opportunity. <laughs> Since I so was they, they give you a job, they're paying for you to, to come dance, like, uh, part of the show, essentially. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So, unfortunately, we're only working two times a week, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. But it was enough. Like, I'm just I'm dealing with a lot of stress in university. So, weekends was the time when I was just like, okay, let's put all of this negative energy mm-hmm. And put it on the stage. <laughs> Just to release. <laughs> to, to release it. Yeah, it's a really good therapy. And and what was uh, what were the hours like? I mean, is it you're starting quite late at night? You're going to bed at early hours of the morning? How does that work? On. So, technically, if you go to work around 10 p.m., you finish around 3 a.m. So if you go straight home after this, you have seven hours of sleep you wake up at 10 which is still morning and you're good to go throughout the day yeah but when you're <laughs> when you're like me have to work which is 3 a.m you go around other clubs and you dance until the sunrise mm-hmm. and for me most of the times it was just i either uh, head back home uh, after all this partying and have like a couple of hours of sleep and then i live throughout the day and then I have another night like this. And then after the second night, I go home and sleep properly. And this this whole time you're working, are are, are you allowed to be drinking? Are you drinking after? Like the, the lifestyle must take a toll on you, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm not a big fan of alcohol. Okay. The only thing I drink is white wine. Sometimes, not even often. But I'm not a big fan of strong alcohol like liquors. Okay. So for me, it wasn't really an issue. I can have fun without alcohol or any substances. Mm-hmm. Pretty happy about it. So, uh, of course, you're in the industry when people are drinking a lot and, like, everything is super crazy. So you have to, like, think about it before you go in there. So, like, you have to expect all possible things. Like, people are vomiting on the streets, inside the club, fighting, People jumping on a stage trying to kick you. Yeah. I don't know. Shouting, screaming. And, and you're okay with the chaos? I don't care. <laughs> you're all right with the chaos. I'm in my own kind of small world mm. while I'm working. And after I'm working, I'm kind of also in my small world because I have friends that I'm hanging out with. And I'm just like... Did you have a, like a small group of friends that would kind of, you know, at least yeah. for support while you're there? Yeah, at that time I used to have mm. like a really close group of friends. And at, at this point, so you're not drinking and are you're on your motorbike, you're going to work and back home and especially at the, the late hours of the evening, were you comfortable with that? Especially when it's raining? Um, touch upon that a, li- a little bit because a lot of people don't understand that, you know, it, it can be dangerous at that time with a lot of uh, inebriated or intoxicated people on the road or um, having not the greatest weather either. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of bikes. I know how to drive a car. I know how to drive a bike. I know how to drive a truck. But bikes are my favorite. Mm-hmm. I fell from the bike a couple of times when it was really bad. I broke a couple of bones. So Which, what did you break? Um, I broke a bone in my feet. Oh, uh, God. Both of them. Uh, and I got really big scars, like, all over my knees and <laughs> stitches and stuff like that. So it. Were you intoxicated or no? No. Just slippery it, roads? It was very slippery road. It wasn't yeah. even rainy. It was just like the crashed sand, I think, or something like that. Yeah. So I was going very slowly, and it just, my bike just slipped. You hit the front brake, uh, maybe. And yeah, the front mm-hmm. brakes. Uh, I had to change a bike up for <coughs> this because the brakes were fucked up. Yeah, we've all been there. I, I go quite slow. I've only crashed once, but it wasn't bad. I knew I was going to crash. I was just going down the road, and uh, it was slippery, and I was going even 10, and it still slid out. Yeah, I was going around 10, too. Yeah. So It didn't hurt, but it wasn't fun. <laughs> 
I still I think I have a scar on my ankle. Yeah, but from in it. terms of like going back from work into yeah. Bangla, it's not scary since I don't think anyone would try to drag me from the bike when I'm going 115 speed. Mm. <laughs> and it's just a moment when you walk from the club in the early morning, you just have to be careful. But it's like Phuket is really safe place comparing to what I've heard about Bangkok. Like here, no one would really try to like drag you in the corner on no. the road. It's very safe for that. Yeah, and they know that they. It's. Uh, I mean, there's, there's bad publicity. People won't come. So, yeah, they keep it quite safe. Safe over here. And um, working on on Bangla, you must have seen a lot of stuff, as we all do, and we've been out on on a night in Bangla. Is there any like? Is there any behind the scenes, you know, things going on there that you can share or you, you have to kind of keep hidden and maybe uh, on the business itself or other surrounding things on Bangla? Just the, the environment. Like, is, mm -hmm. do you feel it's a safe environment? Is it, is it uh, would you like to go back there once things reopen? Yeah, I would definitely yeah. come back when things are reopen to work and to party. But... Mm -hmm. The one thing people have to understand is like uh, Bangla Road and each club is a family. Yeah. So, for example, we take Illusion and Sugar. Those are two families, but the entire Bangla itself, everyone knows everyone. Um, they share business together since uh, there are only a couple of owners on the Bangla Road, different clubs, but it's all under the one hand, so... So everyone's working Everyone together. is kind of working together. They understand, like, if we have a good time here, people will come to your club because, I don't know, we have a show at this time, you have a show at this time. This is after hours. So people from your club will come to our club, we'll yeah. have a show, and then after that, <coughs> they're going to go to your club. So they're promoting each other sometimes. I haven't seen the exact um, example of promoting different clubs club to club but i know that people are really friendly between each other because it's healthy competition it's a very yeah. healthy thing but like in each family you might have small fights in a group but Which it, is it shouldn't affect the workflow shouldn't really shouldn't so when did everything get shut down i, I can't even i honestly i haven't been to bangla since february 2020 kind of when stuff went happened and uh I just didn't go. But for, for you, when did you, I'm assuming now you, you lose your job because everything's closed. What time was that around when everything was officially closed on Bangla? I think it was March something. March this year. March this year. And it still hasn't, yeah, it's probably it's around so March. Yeah. yeah, I think it happens the same time as last year. So yeah. everything got shut down at March 15th last year and then it kind of came and back and kind of came back and, and this year was kind again. of the same situation so <clears throat> my birthday is in april so two years in a row i couldn't celebrate it yeah celebrate at home or <laughs> not even what, what did you were you able to do anything for your birthday dinner with friends or i had a tea with my family there you go cake <laughs> that's it at this point um I could be wrong, I'm assuming, but by the sounds of it, it sounds like your, your, your parents, they're, they were quite strict in the sense that you cannot go out, you cannot drink, and now you've, you've went from zero to hero of, you know, dancing on stage at Bangla. Were they aware of this? My parents don't know that I work on Bangla Road. What if they see this video? Mm. They won't. No. <laughs> <laughs> My mom doesn't speak as good as English as I do, and my dad will, wouldn't have time for that. So okay, so we won't know. We won't do any Russian translations on this video, and they won't understand it. We'll be to right. be honest, one day they will figure it out. So they don't. They they had no idea you were working. They just thought you're a good, uh, being a good. I'm just student. going out. Okay. Since I've been a really good student in high school, I gra I almost graduated with honors. Like, since I had this, like, difficult situation with my parents not being in the country, I, would, I was really stressed. So mm. I was going to graduate with honors, but then I just got an academic diploma. I was pretty happy with it. So is, this is not your, your character. Prior to working on Bangla and, and, and dancing, um, prior before that, did you ever do anything at this level or of, of this uh, excitement? Nope. So is this out of your character or is this something that's been waiting to come out? It was waiting to come out, definitely. Like, 
Okay, I grew up in a family when I wasn't even able to go to the sleepover to my closest friends. Uh, very, very protective. Very protective. Um, we kind of made this joke with my friends that since we have four kids in a family, my parents are kind of trying all of the mistakes on me. Yeah. <laughs> to not <laughs> make the same mistakes on the others. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a first pancake. Yeah, well, that's normal in, in most families. Yeah, until you so break through they were like really protective not letting me go and sleepovers nothing like that mm. and then as soon as i got out of there i was like wow this world is so huge <laughs> and i became a bad girl yeah what not do you mean a bad what, well are you defining that as a bad girl that you're you're dancing or generally like i would never my mom would never thought that i would be like surrounded by such people that work on bangla road because for her it's like sex industry yeah. which is prostitution how yeah. could you do that i'm like mom yeah. this is not really it like i think most people are judging because they don't have enough information yeah and, and m maybe if they've never um experience that part of the industry or, or that nightlife they have no idea and they just have an idea and they're are your parents that they're, i'm assuming they're not partying and going out and no they're very my parents are like old ussr type okay. of parents yeah so yeah that that would be really difficult to explain my parents don't know about half of my tattoos uh oh yeah they know about like the small ones mm. this one i have that says freedom in thai maybe like so when did this, did all these tattoos exist before you left your parents' home or did this new after. Anna, this new Anna character it kinda turn to chaos? And I always wanted a tattoo, mm. always. I wanted something like really small, really, I don't know, cute, something with a meaning because I don't do tattoos just because it looks beautiful. All my tattoos have a meaning. Well, it seems like you're not out of control. You're not running around doing drugs. You're not no. dr getting drunk. You know, nope. it's not that that crazy. Do you feel you have control of your of your your current situation in in life in general? There's nothing that's spun out of control, except for relationship with my parents and building new connections with friends. We can come up to that later. But in terms of like addictions to anything no, no nothing like that and wh what about your relationship with your parents everything you guys are you're seeing each other once a week you're still communicating but they think you're kind of living this uh wh what what do they think you're doing exactly right now so my parents know that i do modeling and they do know that i have only fans okay uh, i kind of went slowly to it that I want to try something new and I want to be more independent. This is my life. I understand that it's risky, but I want to do it. Yeah. So at one point, my mom just like, why not? And that was really shocking because considering my mom didn't let me go to a sleepover and such a side as OnlyFans, yeah. I was really not expecting that but type she, of does she, kn she knows what this is and how yep. that came about. And when did that transition happen to OnlyFans? Did it start on Instagram and then move to OnlyFans? It started on Instagram. I was always a big fan of pictures and like modeling in general. Um, I did it professionally from the age of 12 to 14 when I came to China from time to time. I used to... Do it in China. I used to do it in China a lot. Uh, I, st I think I still have my photos on Taobao. Somewhere. Okay. <laughs> and everyone that doesn't know Taobao, it's the... I, I, it's like the, the the Amazon of China, I guess. Kind of yeah. AliExpress, but AliExpress. not translated. It's yeah. basically all in Chinese. Yes, it is, yeah, I guess it is AliExpress, right? But uh, it in is, Chinese. yeah, but they don't have a delivery outside of China. It's just it's, it's like Lazada. It's all domestic, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you you were doing some modeling, and then this initially started to Instagram. When did you really start to push your Instagram? I think it happened one and a half months ago, maybe two months Just ago. two months ago. And two months before ago. that, it was kind of just personal pictures, having fun, you know. I kind of started to do my Instagram, like taking really good care of it when I was thinking to start OnlyFans. So I've created a mm -hmm. profile and then I was thinking like, okay, my Instagram, since this, this is the only way to promote it for now, doesn't look that good. 
I didn't even look for professional photos. I just wanted like aesthetically pleasing feed. Mm -hmm. That's it. What was your creative art process before you know starting your instagram did you go in with the thought of these are the this is the idea of pictures that i want and also if you can talk about the process behind that and working with pro probably photographers um let, let's put that whole piece of the puzzle together let's say it's day one you sit down and you decide okay i'm gonna take instagram seriously where did you start and can you walk us through that process Okay, so the first thing that I did uh, was I changed my name on Instagram because mm. uh, my family name in a passport is uh, Anna Blagodetilova, which is the Russian one. But since I'm half German, I'm able to take my German name and I'm going to do it as soon as I can, can come back to Russia because you have to uh, be there personally to change To simplify passport. it to change your passport name yeah so my german uh, family name is kessler so i just changed my russian name to the german name yep. and it sounds more i don't know pleasing well to easier me. to pronounce as easier well. to pronounce also because people in russian is just like uh so it's it's most of the time like okay my family name is a uh, blagodetlova okay uh excuse me what yeah it's uh, no, can I'm you can can you spell that and i'm like in my head i'm just like okay b l a g <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even going to try to repeat that. Uh, yeah, don't. I highly don't recommend no. you to do that. Well, that no, that's it's good for for branding yourself as well. It's easier to uh, also easier to remember. So you you start this this process. You're going to go about a month and a half ago. Um, you have a lot of followers at this point, or I had less than a than a thousand. Less than a thousand. And what was what was your maybe like your strategy? Thousand. Your strategy to be able to scale this because you you scaled quickly to 5k then 10k and it's all happened quite quickly um talk about that strategy that process and and your planning before executing how did that all come together and maybe this could be important for anyone looking to do it okay so the first thing that i did is i looked at the profiles uh that i liked and i was thinking like okay what exactly do i like in them because this is a really like this is the thing that takes the longest i think to understand what do you want people to see on your page because i wanted my instagram to be like a lifestyle but it, with a little bit of erotics because i mean i assume i have a good buddy so i'm trying to show it off i'm not afraid of it anymore mm -hmm. and at that time i was like kind of breaking myself from the inside because i had a really like stressful situation i've lost all of my friends i not because of only fans just the situation behind the scenes with the um, school in the university in the university the, lost a lot of your th thai friends also the thai friends that i had on bangla road yeah. i just like at one point my entire world just broke mm. and i decided i want to start from the very beginning it's very difficult in Phuket because everyone knows everyone. So I've completely changed my group of friends, people that I'm talking to. I have some old friends from clubs still, but there are not a lot of them. Yeah. They, you, like, you really have to work hard to stay in my circle right now because my expectations are really... The walls are up. Mm -hmm. No one's coming in that easily. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, okay... I want to see what my perfect Instagram looks like. And I hate copy pasting okay. in terms of like style or anything. So I just said, and I'm like, okay, I want to choose colors. I want to choose what kind of pictures do I kind of like, like the style. Also, the presets are really good. If you don't know what preset is, like um, a set of filters that you can yeah. put on the photo like yeah, the light the color the sharpness the brightness you're yeah. adjusting all, all these and, and adjusting you find a recipe the, kind of yeah you're kind of finding the recipe for the perfect photo yeah for editing and use that throughout your entire feed um so yeah. you're going for this erotic lifestyle uh concept and when you start to roll this out, are you working with a photographer? Are you doing the art direction yourself or is somebody helping you? So I do have a photographer that I've met at the same time when my world was breaking. Okay. Apart. 
uh, I've met a photographer. We became friends. And at some point he was like, do you want, have you ever heard of OnlyFans? I'm like, yeah, I did. So what about it? He's like, okay, so do you know how it works? And like, no, I don't. I had no idea what it is. I was like, okay. We just said, he explained it uh, to me. I was like, okay, that doesn't sound that bad. And I'm going to get to that later. But so I was just like, okay, but I don't think I can make professional photos that will look good by myself. So he was like, I can help you with it. So mm. from that, since that time, we were going throughout this journey. Now my Instagram was like. A so you guys are kind of uh, working this as a business together. And maybe I'm assuming he takes a percentage of helping you out. I'm not really discussing the percentage. Uh, yeah, no, um, you don't have. Yeah, that's fine. But I mean, you're, you're, let's say you're we partners. We have a team. You're, you're uh, partners in this business. And, it's, and yeah, so we've created a team, which is um, me, my photographer, and one more girl that does the job that I would not like to do. Which is what? Talking to guys. Uh, community management, this side. Kind of. Yeah, okay. Uh, so. It's a lot of work because if you're getting, you're getting, uh, I don't know, 500 people sliding in your DMs every day, you can't be replying to all of them. Yeah, so she doesn't touch my Instagram. Instagram is my side. She only yeah. touches my OnlyFans. Okay. But I've made a rule for myself. I'm really, I'm not good in texting. And OnlyFans is built on people paying money to get your attention. Yeah. It's not even about the pictures. It's just we get some privacy, we can talk to you. Yes, we pay for it, but I mean, it's not that much, so. So how quickly did that transition? You're doing uh, Instagram for a month and then you quickly transitioned into OnlyFans. So it kind of started at the same time. Basically, I was thinking how to promote my OnlyFans. It's already made a decision to open it. And then I was like, okay, Instagram. So I built this like perfect picture of how I want my Instagram to look. I started to con collect photos. And eventually we came up to the thought that, yes, Instagram is the perfect way to promote your OnlyFans. But you have there is a really, really like thin line between what you can mm -hmm. post and you cannot post. So it was like a tricky side because once I got almost blocked by Instagram. On Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah. Even though it wasn't something like super wow open mm. or whatever yeah yeah i mean it's i'm sure they they have certain rules and regulations on the photo of what can be shown and what can't be shown what was your your strategy to scale so quickly because like you said you've only started about a month and a half ago and really pushing it and you quickly went from one to five and now you've passed 10k so you're getting story swipe ups you're rolling in it now um did you have a strategy? Did you get lucky along the way that people were pushing your content? Or how did that work for you to be able to scale so quickly? Okay, first of all, as soon as I've put a link in my bio about the OnlyFans, not a straight link, but some kind of link, uh, Instagram sees it and it starts to put push your profile up. Yeah. Second thing is the um, hashtags. Hashtags help a lot you just in the posts in the posts yeah. mm, in the comments too but i put it in a post personal preference yeah um you have to find hashtags that are useful for your profile don't use anything that doesn't connect to your profile just as long as it's like you have to have like very popular hashtags like half popular and like the one that have less than five thousand posts Instagram has own algorithms yeah. on how to push your profile, but I didn't really care about it. I just like found the ones that I like and I started to post them everywhere on my stories, on my posts. It was pretty simple. And eventually I started to get like random people watching my stories, find me on locations, um, inviting me to photo shoots, which was pretty cool because I've never got so much attention. It started to go grow, but very, very slowly. And then I was like, okay, something is going wrong. I looked at my photos and I was like, okay, something is definitely wrong. It doesn't look as how I want it to look like. And I, my point was to create very aesthetic feed, like the one that you go on Pinterest. Yeah. And you like search for Pinterest and it looks like all perfect. So I wanted to create this kind of picture. And at the same time, I wanted to have like high fashion 
like photography that will like mix with some homemade photos. Yep. So I was kind of like looking for that really long. And then you you found your way, and did you start archiving and redoing your entire feed? I just, um, basically, I started to do a lot of photos at once. Like, for example, I choose a day. I choose five outfits, different locations. We do a tons of different photos. Then I put them on my gallery, and I switch them between each other and look how will they look in my feed. So for now, before I post a photo on Instagram... I already have a preset for another month yeah. how my profile will look like. So if I have some new photos that I really want to put in, I just like switch them places and see how would they look. So it's like also it's very important to understand what category of people you're trying to catch. Because, for example, my Instagram is 85% men. Yeah. So you kind of have to think like a man, like what do I want to see on the pictures? Yeah. And you can clearly see, like, the pictures with, like, ass and boobs getting the most likes because men like ass and boobs. Yeah. And I am more of a fan of, a, like, portrait photography. So I'm trying to mix that up, kind of thinking about my audience and about myself. Yeah, you're also trying to follow the trends as well. I'm sure, I'm sure through Instagram you, you get different trends that, that, that come into play and you need to follow that and make sure that... If you are, uh, if something is trending, that you're going to jump on that to maybe help boost the account as well. I'm always looking for new ideas because yeah. you never know what's going to get popular. Mm -hmm. For example, I spend around like 20 minutes a day on Pinterest just because I like the idea. I'm not copying it exactly like I saw it on photo, but I like like... Creative inspiration. Kind of an inspiration, yeah. yeah. So I'm coming up with new ideas every day. I'm just writing them up, searching for locations, calling people, connecting with yeah. um, some studios or places. Like I'm going to do a shooting on the karting, which was pretty easy because I came there with friends and I'm like, I found the owner. I'm like, can I do a shooting here? Like, yeah, sure. Before the opening, come like okay that was easy and these <laughs> photographers you're 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 just working with your your business partner as a photographer you're working with others as well and how, how does that process work like if a photographer reaches out to you are they reaching out to you to be able to use your images for themselves so they can have a copy um or are or do you have to pay them like how does that business uh transaction work so usually if I'm getting a photographer texting me, usually it's time for photo. So they can use my photos with my face or body for their portfolio or post it on their website. Yeah. But for posting it, I have to sign a paper because otherwise they could just steal it. For using it for portfolio to like show other people, yeah, sure. I'm just, they're taking my time. I'm taking mm. their photos. We're all good. I'm taking them in the post sometimes. Okay, that that's really clear. depends on situation. Like sometimes people are just, oh, I want to shoot you. You look very beautiful, but I want to use your photos on my website. I'm like, I have to like sign it. Depends yeah, on I how many people are gonna see it. And like and maybe double check the person is valid as well and credible, and making yeah. sure that's legit. Do you have any situations you've dealt with that were a bit awkward or strange dealing with people reaching out to you? I have more than a thousand requests for my Instagram DMs that ah, I didn't okay. check yet. But every day I get tons of messages with like, uh, how much per night? Ah, okay. Um, what kind of porn do you shoot? <laughs> ah, is this like the, the most typical question you'll get? Uh, kind of like, yeah, I'm like, people are don't understand what i'm doing and they start to like create their own idea and then they're sending me like but i want to spend a night with you or like no my favorite is i know you have only fans but can you send me a free picture ah okay okay <laughs> <laughs> i want to get an idea of what you have on your only fans like i you can have an idea or what's on my only fans by seeing my instagram feed so it's a little bit more yeah. than that so these uh, and what is the craziest DM you've ever got? I don't even know if you can share that. <laughs> Maybe This is difficult. I, I don't even know. I've never thought about it. I think we have some kids watching, so earmuffs. The craziest. <laughs> the craziest DM. 
I've got um, an option to sign a contract for, I think it was two hundred thousand dollars to come to U.S. and film in a porn. Ah, uh, okay. Movie. And then you don't know how legit that is either. Mm, yeah, but it was like an actual agency that oh, okay. I knew. Mm. And I was like, um, I'm sorry, I kind of, um, I'm kind of stuck here. Yeah. I don't really shoot this type of videos. Like the most popular question, even though I said the picture was the most popular, but the most popular question is what kind of content do you have on OnlyFans? Uh, okay. So for me, there are two options. OnlyFans can be like a second porn hub, okay. but your personal and it can be your personal gallery, which is my type. So some pictures that are censored on Instagram, Instagram just, it's it's a very like polite community. You cannot really post nudes there. But I think that nudes are art too. So it really depends on how you pose on a picture and what kind of like message you're trying to push through there's, the, a, there's a thin line of there uh, is a really thin line AV. and people are thinking that only fans is just like or you're <coughs> sending your nudes pictures to like random guys for money i'm like no it's kind of like a facebook but private so you just have pictures like you go into the photo gallery that's it it's not even something i can't post them on instagram but why would i do that if i can make money off it? yeah and and I'll, I want to. I'll jump into that part as well. But to take a step back, th these people that slide in your DM, some guys offering you two hundred thousand US dollars to be able to to go to US and shoot that, but obviously you can't go. If you could have gone, would you have went? No. Okay. So you you Never have you have you have so you have your you have your line and 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 that's I, I think have that principles. that's I have morals. Yeah. So I think that's fair for your listeners also to understand as well um, because we we can clip this and that could be a specific clip where you can use on your feed like here's that line which is fair um to jump ahead to the only fans uh section or the only fans part let's say from the business side of it so the majority of the people that are converting to customers on your OnlyFans, it's all coming from Instagram, or is there any other external source where people can be driven to your OnlyFans? Like, for example, from OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Like, if they're on that platform already, if they're able... Do you have the data that you can see of your customers where they're coming from? You can track them. Um, I personally don't do that because I don't really care when they come from i've never done like paid for promotions or anything in my entire life so mm -hmm. my instagram and my only fans is growing naturally uh, by just creating a beautiful pictures getting people interested and they just sign up i have a lot of photographers that are following my only fans just to see what kind of pictures do i have because i cannot post them on instagram yeah but they're getting a lot of experience from that uh basically you can promote uh, same as on instagram you can promote your photos but since I don't do that, I like to collaborate with other people. So they put in my post on their profile and I put their post in my profile. Like shout out for shout out. On your, on your Instagram or your OnlyFans? On both. Okay. So you're cr doing cross promotion. Yeah, kind okay. of. And that, that makes sense because if they have a lot of viewers and blah, blah, blah. Um, how, many, uh, how many subscribers do you have now on, on, on OnlyFans? Is that public information or is that hidden? I don't really. I, I mean, I don't know if it's, I have no idea. I've never. To be honest, I've never questioned myself. Like, um, people come and they go. They the subscribe. number doesn't really matter. Ah, uh, okay. So, most of the income comes from messages. And I don't do that since I'm, I'm not comfortable with talking to how, other people. How does that work on OnlyFans from, to monetize the account? Um, what different forums are there to monetize? What dis different options do they give you? And what do you do? So my job is to be on pictures, obviously. And my job is to show what kind of person I am. Like, people should be interested not in how you look, but in what kind of person you are. Like, your personality matters mm. a lot. So I'm creating this... Mm, People should, under, should understand who are they talking to. 
So I'm creating this list of things that I like. Um, I'm also, I'm tracking all the messages that are coming. So like your rolling. hobbies, your interests and applying that to your yeah. photos. So, so it's example, not just like made up. You know, maybe you're playing a video game. If that's not your hobby, you're not going to do the photo. Yeah, like that. but since I'm like, I used to be a gamer. Okay. Like, so I have a lot of. Uh, so you appreciate photos. our arcade back here. I love it. Yeah, but I'm more like in video games type. Ah, okay. So I have an Xbox. Um, Got gotcha. you. Probably gonna get a PS5 soon. <laughs> That's why when you saw our, our, our computer downstairs, you're like, "Whoa, what do you got there? <laughs> what did you got there? Yeah, yeah, they have a beautiful setup. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not doing any fake photos. So yeah. I'm only doing whatever I'm interested in. Uh, the photographer's job is obvious. He's taking pictures, and that girl, she's monetizing my messages. So they, that's part of the the revenue stream. People will come on, and h how does it work? They're paying you uh, per month per message. Um, first to subscribe. Uh, it's it's kind. Of, it looks exactly like a Facebook, but you subscribe to see what kind of content do you have, like okay. a private Instagram or private Facebook okay. page. But um, I am allowed to send messages to whoever I want for like, okay, let's like chat or something. And to respond me, people have to pay. Okay. And then they have to pay every time they send a response? Depends. Depends. Okay. Depends. Really depends. You can set different I parameters. Can set it. Yeah. It's like, it's very comfortable because I can monetize it the way I want to. Like I can make the conversation completely free or it can make like each message if it's even if it's like okay like a dollar or something mm -hmm. so it's completely up to me and then they they would pay for like a subscription and there it's a monthly fee monthly. and then they're paying that subscription to have uh, free access to your feed which mm -hmm. can in include photos and videos and what is your 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 content you don't have to go into crazy detail on that but uh, is it more or less just taking your content from Instagram and making it more exposed? Or is it going to another level beyond that? Okay, so the easiest way to explain it is um, content is not a porn, but you'll get yeah. a boner. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so that's that's the soundbite. <laughs> so people are asking, like, what kind of content do you have? Like, yeah. it's not porn. Like, I'm not showing yeah, off, yeah. like, the crazy parts. Like... For example, I'm bisexual, okay. so for me, like appreciating girls' body is like mm, amazing. Mm. Uh, so I don't think nipples are such a like bad thing to show, but like I'm not showing them fully, like through the covers or something. Are you trying to? I'm trying to like balance again, it. Again, have so that fine line. Yeah, this is a really fine line when you go from erotics to porn. So it's not porn. Mm. But, but you'll get excited okay there we go so go check it out <laughs> <laughs> interesting and um i, I think that that kind of gives the audience a, a clear idea of what it is and what it's about because i'm sure a lot of people they see only fans and then maybe they click and yeah let's not check it out um or, or they don't want to pay so they don't care right um talking about only fans and the transition from uh, well, the closure specifically of the bars and the nightlife in in uh, Thailand, not just Phuket. Um, there's been a transition of a lot of uh, female workers transitioning from the nightlife um, on to OnlyFans. And maybe you have friends where they're starting to do this, and I'm, I'm assuming you, you are aware of this. Um, is this working? Okay, so there are many reasons why you can start OnlyFans. For me, it personally was, wasn't was really a money issue because, I don't know, like, I had some help from my parents still, I was, but I really wanted to become independent. But it wasn't the main reason. I really wanted to break this fear of showing off my body, even though I was like, okay, I'm beautiful, I know that, but... Mm, I'm not comfortable with it. Mm. I I don't want to be shy anymore. So at one point I was just like go for it. Go for it. Yeah, just, just go for do it. whatever. If you don't like it, you can always delete it. Mm -hmm. And also the reason why I'm not showing off too much like because you understand this is a social media, whatever comes to internet stays there forever. So 
of course people can come there screenshot your pictures and keep it and just yeah. keep it or post it somewhere or sell it for more money so i'm making sure that if it ends up on the internet i won't be you're being careful it. with it yeah. yeah and are are you seeing like uh do you have friends that have transitioned to OnlyFans as well and maybe using it for more than just a, uh, soft erotic purposes? I do. Yeah. I do have friends that are doing something in between my side and the porn side, Yeah. but they're making more money from it because they're showing off more. And this is more of like, if you know OnlyFans, you can make thousands of dollars a week. Yeah. So it really up to you. Of course, the more you show, the more you're getting paid. But it, you have to like know how to manage it also. And these friends were they working in the nightclubs before? I mean, uh, without we don't we don't need to be so blunt with it. But I mean, let's say were they working girls? I think um, the one who and obviously I know, we don't have to share their names, so that's of course okay. no. Um, the one that I know, she started OnlyFans bef when it just opened. Like, it was just a new platform. No one really knew about it. Um, it wasn't really a club situation or whatever. She just was interested. Oh, something new. Okay, let's mm. try it. Now she's like a millionaire. <laughs> So. Yeah, I th I think like the, the, the point of my question is more or less, it's to focus on like, the and I actually had this conversation with someone else, not not this detail to someone else on the podcast and we were more or less talking about kind of how the um the club scene the the go go bars the bar girls this might end up dying in Thailand because of OnlyFans meaning they no longer par need to go to the club and and say be a working girl they can just get the same amount of money on OnlyFans so that that was my that was the point of my question do you have friends that are in that situation and their personal feedback where they're saying i'm making enough on OnlyFans that even when the bars open back up i don't need to go back there has, have you heard this or, or no. do you think this is true clubs and only fans are really different places like it really depends like if you want to switch to something it's like changing a job basically so yes it's online but it's still a job you have to work on it like i'm working on it every day yeah so this are these are two different industries so if clubs are more like i'm having fun here because i have friends music and stuff dancers and uh, i don't know like strippers are just a part of a decoration yeah on only fans you're the main focus so it's more like your own business it really depends on you like if clubs are open back i'm gonna go back but i'm yeah. not gonna stop my only fans for example because it's my it's like my second business yeah. Why should I stop? But it's like working in a big company and having your own coffee shop. But you, um, and, and this question I think is, is uh, it's uh, it's personal, but it's how to frame it. It's when you were working in the clubs, you were not acting as uh, like a working girl. You were just doing the dancing, right? Yeah. But there's other people like uh, girls in these clubs that okay. are, and everyone's aware of that in, in different, you know, your, your uh, clubs on Bangla. And I, that's definitely not a, a hidden fact. Were you friends with any of these girls? Yep. Did I they am. try to bring you into the, their world? Not really. It's a personal choice. If you want to come to it, you'll find people eventually who will bring you to that. But I've never was I, I was never interested in that so i didn't really went that deep but yeah. i i personally know people that are doing both and you do you see and usually honestly they, they could be any they could be not just ties but from any country doing that uh in in uh in phuket or, or pataya or bangkok or wherever but do you see some of those friends they're doing only fans now as as well because the clubs are closed and that that's that was my question have they are they making more money now on OnlyFans than they could have been making in the club because the because it's closed and we're in this current situation yeah and have, have they mentioned that to you yep 
I and got it mentioned a couple of times. And what did they say exactly, or how did they kind of explain that situation? It's easier. It's Online, easier. Online, it's easier. You're making more money with less effort. And did they ever mention that when things open up again, they'll go back, or they go, I'm done with that life, I'll just keep doing OnlyFans because I don't need to go back there now? Some of them, yeah, they will definitely just keep OnlyFans and stop doing this extra... Um, how do you say it? Well, I guess extra income. Extra income from the... Like extra services of clubs. Yeah, from the night. Uh, from the nightlife. Yeah. We're always looking for easier ways to make money. Yeah. So if you have something that you can make more money with less effort, they'll stick to that, most of them. Trying to be more efficient. and Yeah, I'm sure that then when it opens, they can be making... Uh, have two revenue streams, maybe there and, and online. Um when the world opens back up and you had that opportunity maybe to go to university in Netherlands, would you still be doing OnlyFans there? Or is this something that's more temporary for you now? It really depends. I guess like, it's OnlyFans is more like... I look at it as a more like an art gallery. So for me, I don't know, maybe it's temporary. Maybe not. I'm just going with the flow. Yep. I'm I'm not really thinking about future. And I think much. most people are like this now too. The it's too uh, too much uncertainty and unpredictability that to answer questions too far in the future is well, you can't. Um on a uh, let's take it it's not on a lighter note because well we discussed this earlier. Let's talk about negative feedback and comments and haters. <laughs> what was that? No, oh, something on his phone. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, negative feedback and haters and, and maybe these comments coming in both on Instagram and I, I'm not even sure if that would come into OnlyFans because why would it? Mm -hmm. Maybe it does. Mm -hmm. um, just take it away from there and, and uh, get in the driver's seat and let us know how um, you've experienced that. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to say it straight. I'm not a drama person, so yeah. I'm keeping everything like on the level when it's completely reasonable i was getting a lot of comments from people that i know you became a slut you're making money for your prostitute comments or dms dms and comments both and people that you knew P people that i knew oh, personally wow. eventually about 50 percent of them looking at how it goes uh said sorry i didn't really knew what you were doing i didn't really know how it works now i'm thinking about starting my own only fans and stuff so it was mostly women Mo mostly women okay. yeah guys are fine you're they showing off your body <laughs> why not <laughs> they don't care keep it going yeah like i no, i have one person who who is still sending me my posts and saying i don't want you to post it i want you to send it to me <laughs> like Subscribe to my OnlyFans yeah. and will. <laughs> yeah, but this is just something very... I don't know. Um, I'm not really paying that much attention, but it was really hard when the closest people, like I used to have a best friend. She was sneaking my pictures from my profile and saying that, well, she became such a slut, blah, blah, blah. Spreading it. Spreading to it. Your rumors group of friends. and stuff. Like... I'm just keeping it that simple. Like, if you don't know what I'm doing, don't talk about it. Mm. Like, if you're not sure, don't talk about it. Because unless you have a proof, I mean, it's pointless. And are you confronting them back or do you kind of just ignore them? Um, it really depends what people are saying. Because if they're saying like, oh, you're a slut or something, I'm like, uh, why do you think so? So I'm trying to like explain it, but if it doesn't really work through like five messages or something, I'm just like, okay. Now, now you would do that to a close friend, but to a stranger, do you even uh, give it the time of day or you just ignore it? I'm not paying too much attention to it. Like if it really depends on how tired I am, like I can keep the message in the reply like in a week, but it, it really depends if I want to bother myself with it. And I'm sure everybody that is doing this type of work, they get the same negative feedback. I mean, it, it's inevitable. 
Um, how does that affect you, like mentally or emotionally? Or you just brush it off and you, it's it's my life. I don't need to deal. I don't even need to listen to these people. Or does it get to you at some t- points in time? Except for the closest people, it didn't really hurt me. It just mm, hater is a fire of progress. Like mm. they're your motivation to show that you can do better. You're there. It's like Cardi B once said, "Thank you for all the haters because they're actually downloading my stuff to talk shit about it." <laughs> so. So you're still you're getting paid, so it's fine. Yeah, Anyways. so like people are buying subscription to my OnlyFans. They hate just that yeah, so like I'm getting money from you. So why would they <laughs> why would they subscribe and then leave negative comments? So they're giving you money to leave a comment. Checking. Checking. And these are probably these are friends. Yeah. Strange. Very oh well, you're getting paid. Yes, like instead I can give free access to people if I want to. So like if they ask me, I would like people that I know. If I don't mind, like a girl or something, because yeah. I have some girls that are interested in how does it work, what kind of pictures do you post. I, if I cannot meet with them personally, I would give them an access to like a day. They see how it works, and then I can help them to manage their account, for example. like mm. I did that for a week or two for different girls. So uh, how, how does th- wh- Why were you doing that? Like, What is your motivation to do that? Because... In the first two weeks when I've started, I was completely lost. I didn't know what to do before I found that girl that w- that's helping me now. She's more experienced in terms of OnlyFans. She has her own. Um, and I was just like, I need someone who is experienced in this sphere so I can help. So she can, she or he, whoever can help me to understand how to manage it. So it works itself. Yeah. Like, I don't know, mm-hmm. automatic messages or like posting pictures on certain time. Like on Instagram, you have an option. You can yeah. post pictures on certain time, like with the hashtags, as long as you prepare it ahead of time. So I was just, I've been on in that situation when I don't know what to do. So now you reach out to them and then they, and, and do you know these people in advance, they're friends or you're just reaching usually, out to random people? Usually just people who I know. If okay. I don't know them, I get to know them and then help. And then they're happy. They're not charging you for that, that time. Or I'm fee. not, no, they're I'm not asking for money because I never ask why do you start OnlyFans? Um, except for the fact, what kind of pictures do you want to post? Like, uh, that's, that's the only thing. So maybe the person has, struggling with money or something Mm. i don't want to really get deep into that i just want to help life is a boomerang you help others others will help you pay it forward what comes eventually it will come back to me and is there are there communities or groups for only fans for people like yourself where you you you're involved it could even be a facebook group where you uh can communicate together on on problems you're having with only fans running ideas bouncing ideas off each other does this exist there are agencies that build on purpose to promote and help to grow your OnlyFans. There are groups on Instagram that are helping with that, that promote your links, that getting people on there. Um, but groups like just like help groups, yeah. they're usually creating by like small communities. Like, for example, I have like 10 girls that are doing OnlyFans. We're all talking together. We're sharing ideas sharing each other's posts doing like and then where do you guys communicate in like a facebook group or is it a instagram group or how does that work it's usually like a chat and whatsapp or whatsapp or telegram oh, okay. or whatever yeah, gotcha. yeah so doesn't really matter what are the next steps for for you and and this business how are you going to scale it to a hundred thousand on on instagram which in turn will bring you subscribers to only fans what what, what is your, your, your plan? So for now, I'm already happy with what I have, but there is never too perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so my main focus is Instagram. doesn't matter if my OnlyFans exists or not because I found my, my spot. But like on Instagram, I'm getting this feedback. I'm getting a lot of mm, shops sending me stuff to promote. I'm getting paid for it. For example, I got stuff sent from Korea. I'm making a photo shoot for them, of course. Uh, the photographers On your Instagram. On my Instagram, yeah. Um, I might not even post the picture. I'm just like doing the modeling. So for me, the 
the main point was to connect to right people through the OnlyFans and through Instagram so I can get this like modeling jobs. Okay. So for me, the main focus was that like photography, dancing, modeling and stuff like that. So when they reach out to you, they're sending you, um, initially you would have been like a micro influencer and now you're growing. Um, they're sending you products to promote and are and, they paying you? And paying. And paying you. Most of the time. How does that really work on, on Instagram? Um, especially for the product side there's they there's is there like a we call it a rule of thumb like if you have ten thousand followers and your engagement is ten percent therefore i pay you one hundred dollars to post my thing one time plus here's a product like is there like a matrix for that on instagram so you you can set your value or have an idea of your value and this question's a bit long-winded or do you have to reach out in your community to ask how much should i ask for I have my own price on my on the unit of time. So okay. modeling is counting on time. Doesn't matter what kind of product you shoot. So I, I mean more about like the uh, posting the product on your Instagram feed as a promotion, a paid promotion. Okay, so usually I'm not posting something that I'm getting paid for on my Instagram. I'm not doing promotion like paid promotions on my page yeah. if i want to it's my personal like it's my decision if i want to tag the shop or not but if this happens if i if i keep the clothes or like any item that i like and i want to like show the shop that yes i really like it i want like if i post it means i like it so in terms of modeling it's just i have a price yeah, the for photographer the, has a price. So but for really for matter. the like more for the Instagram side, like they will they reach out to you and say, hey, I, I, they're in Korea and they want to send you a product, mm -hmm. and then you just provide your address, and they ship it to you, and yep. you you use that product. Do they have any expectations that you have to take that product and post it on your Instagram, or do they kind of just cross their fingers and hope you do it? We usually discuss that before okay. they send the product. So if they want to be posted on the feed or in the story, it really depends because mm, depending on the on the product, depending on the size, depending on my lifestyle, like, for example, if I don't cook at home, I don't need, like, I don't know, yeah, baking trays or yeah. something. So obviously I won't post it. I'll just say no. Like, yeah. It doesn't fit to no your, the, yeah, your brand. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to be my type of thing that I would use. Mm -hmm. So usually if they want me to post something and I like it, and we just, okay, let's make sure that it will go good with the feed where I'm creating a sketch of the idea of the photo that I want to post. Sometimes I'm posting a, a picture and I'm doing like a gallery, which is um, more than one picture in a, yep. in a post. So if like they're okay with it, if they're okay with it, I'll just post a picture of the actual product on the second slide. So if it's okay with them, it's really, like, it really depends. And then they'll send you, like, money for that post? Um, Sometimes, depend. it really depends. It really depends. On on average, I was, the point of the question is more to kind of create, like, an idea for anyone out there building an Instagram account. Uh, and again, it's more of, like, a pricing matrix saying that, like, okay, if I have uh, 50,000 followers and I do a post of uh, shoes and I call it a paid promotion, if someone sends me the shoes, this is how much I will charge them for that post. Do you, Are you able to touch upon that and and let people understand like the potential that of the potential of money people can make on Instagram based on how many followers they have? They definitely can, but to make sure how much it costs, we usually just text people with this amount of followers and ask how much do it take for okay. the promotion. Like experienced people, people that are just starting, you cannot just put up a price like this. You can't just. So if yeah. you have 50,000 and someone sends you shoes and you got to do a paid promotion, like, and you do one post, let's say on your feed, how much would you charge for that? And I'm sure this, it's not just for you. It's pretty much anyone that has this many followers. Is it like $100, $200, $500? Um, usually what we do is uh, if you have a setup price for the post, for example, let's take $200. Um, we're taking the price of the product 
Yeah. Uh, and we kind of like compare it to what we already want to get. If the product is very expensive, sometimes we'll lower down the price if you can keep the product later. And you okay. Uh, if you don't like the product but it's expensive, sometimes we have to send it back, but we get paid more for for the post. So, so really if you're not yeah. keeping the product and you are able to send it back, which is beneficial for the shop too because y- they can put it on the market again like for yeah. the second hand or something because I'm usually not wearing stuff that I'm going to send back on the street or something. I'm, I'm returning it in the same way that it was sent to me. Yeah. You're just getting a little bit more for the post. That's it. Like for example, right now I have 10K. Um, if I have a company that sends me shoes and I want to keep them, so like the standard price, or the post would be like 20 to 50 dollars depending on which time of the day you post it really depends yeah really depends on your audience on which time of the day you posted uh what kind of post is this because for example if i'm going to be all dressed up and i'm going to have like shoes on me yeah, that's, hard to notice. W- that's one when i'm literally standing in like i don't know underwear or something with only shoes on which the main focus is the shoes. I have a picture on my Instagram. Maybe yeah. we can pull it up later. Um, the focus is on shoes. So really, really depends. And also if if these shoes company, a shoe company reaches out to you, right? Um, and your audience is predominantly male. It must be hard to sell to females the shoes. Because, I mean, your engagement of, of the females jumping in, it, it must be hard to, to measure the conversions and what sales they can get from that anyways. Is That's that true? That's where creativity comes in. Okay. <laughs> so I do take pictures with guys for, promo- pro- for like promotions or any advertisement. Um, for example, we're getting uh, shoes for men. Um, I can wrap it up and post it as a... Um, got a gift for my friend or something ah, okay. but like uh, i'm usually asking for unisex type of things so you can wear both women and men which is pretty good but there there is always a way even though like for example my um audience is 80 percent men it's just the way of thinking like you have to think how to promote it if you want to get money you'll find a way <laughs> So maybe, uh, and, and you have no business or marketing background. Did you kind of just learn along the way? Kind of, yeah. I, I'm looking at other people a lot. I'm learning from experience, but that's it. Mm. Like I'm looking at bigger brands. Uh, let's just touch like Chanel or Versace, for example. I'm just looking at their feed, looking at how they promote their shops. Um you're just learning on the way. So taking some creative concepts and adapting it to your style and your brand. Kind and of. just getting some direction that way. Because I was actually thinking <coughs> about taking a course on like marketing or something or like, I don't know, a special course on Instagram, how to promote your account. But then I was like, what if it doesn't work for me? Like you, hi- you kind of have to try it. And I don't see the point of like mm, paying for some course that might not be able to help you later. So... I think most of it you can find out there for free on YouTube anyway, so it's not that that complicated. Um, all right, so we can do a segment. Well, I don't know why I call it a segment. It's a show, not a TV show, but um, we can... Why don't we pull up your, your Instagram because uh, we can clip this later as well. Uh, we'll look at a, a few photos um, and then maybe you can explain like the, the creative... Uh, like the concept where this came from, where you're filming and what's going on here. So again, it's going to be a lot of booty shots, I think. <laughs> um, I don't where, mind. Where should, we, where should we start? I'll, I'll allow you to decide. Um, we can scroll. This TV, it will appear here. It'll look fine. Just this TV's got a little weird thing on the le- left corner. So it won't look like that. But I guess, Talise, you can scroll. And as we scroll... Uh, you, can cho- you can choose a picture uh, and it'll look well whatever okay i'll I'll choose and again whatever is also maybe what maybe a promotion one that could be a good start are there which one can we go to that maybe it's a product you're promoting Um, okay the the two people are laying together yep okay click on that one one. which one to the left that one okay let's take a look and 
Okay, so... So, yeah, just explain what's going on here. This one, uh, we were uh, taking some shots for the villa. So, usually how we work is if we have, for example, on the side we have a villa that owners are texted us asking if we can make some shots for, like, putting on a magazine later or, like, yeah. an advertisement. So, usually what we do, we do, like, a lifestyle photos and at the same time, like, we're spending about an hour to make pictures for our Instagram. So they can see that the main focus is on us. But at the same time, this is a beautiful place. You can see the infinity pool. You can see the perfect view, the sea and stuff. So okay. we're kind of, like, connecting it uh, by tagging a place and also showing off the place a little bit. But at the same time, the main focus is on, on the... And, that, and we can see the tag at the top. Vista Del Mar Villas Nython. So this yep. is at Nython. Yep. And... The it's the owners of the villa. What, what was their intention? Is there how, how are they going to uh, get a conversion from this? Their intention is to rent the villa to do what, or just to get an image, and then they're using that photo for something later. So um, they will not get this photo. They're getting others that are like um, let's call it less open. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, when I'm posting photos like this people see that this is like a beautiful place and i got about like 200 dms asking where is this before i take the place okay uh because i was filming some stories and stuff like that and people were like wow i want to rent this villa so we're actually communicating it's kind of like promoting but at the same time i'm getting pictures they're getting people who want to rent the villa so and then how does it work on their side they've paid you to come do this they give you a free weekend or most of the times we're just uh, getting a place for like 24, 48 hours. And so allowing you to do yeah, your photo shoots. We can make photo shoots. We can have like a small party community, yeah. something like, something like yeah, that. Yeah. So nothing much. Is it really depends on what kind of, um, what do you want to get and what does the client want to get. And they would reach out to you or you would reach out to them? Um, or they, it could have been friends? It could have been friends. If I like the place, for example, I was shooting in Hilton. Uh, we're also going to work with uh, La Meridian. So if I like the place, I can easily just text them and ask, like, okay, I want to talk to your marketing manager or to selling department. And we just, like, we manage it pretty easy. If it doesn't work for them, it's okay. I'm going to try a different place. Sometimes the hotels are reaching out or... So, I mean, technically, like, with your influence now, are, are could you not go hotel room to hotel room? Like, just getting a free hotel room? Like, ah, oh, this weekend I'm going to go stay here, and, hey, uh, I'll promote it and get some shots, and now you get a free ho five-star hotel room. Yeah, kind of. Um, we're like actually you're, you're, planning... You're at this level now, but, I mean, maybe before it would be much more difficult. Before it was much more difficult. Yeah. Now, easy. Okay, let's take another look, and especially a promotion one. Is this a promotion on this this wristband here or uh, bracelet? Sorry, no, no, the the one next to it, the swimming suits. Most of the swimming suits that this I take one pictures. Here. Yeah. Okay, let's click on that. Uh, so I'm sent getting sent products. And then you just tag at Boss Babe Thailand, and she's the one selling. Yep. The swimsuits. So I'm tagging them, but yep. I'm getting the product and I'm getting paid. And then is there a reason that you don't? Uh, put too much text behind it like go follow go buy or you j why, why just the tag is that personal or um really depends like usually if it's a promotion i'm just putting like the person like yeah. for the shop that i'm getting the money i mean the product from and if it's my personal post it really depends on my mood like, okay but i understand that i have to text tag the person okay i will tag if I just feel like writing something, like I have some inspirational posts, they're yeah. like... But she'll reach out. She She's reached out to you to offer you that bathing suit to say, hey, I'm going to send you a bathing suit. Can you do a post and give me a tag? Like, that, that's the uh, that's the connection? Usually, usually it's like, uh, hi, you have a beautiful feed. Do you think we can like collaborate with you or something? Mm -hmm. And like, how much do you want per, per post? And then we're working it out. So... If it's if I like the product itself, I might be very kind and say like, yeah, I won't take any money from you. Just send me the product. I'll take pictures for you. Okay. 
And anything else? Let's take a look at one more. These, this white pant thing, pants. Are you selling anything there? No, uh, no I'm just. Let's keep going. The dress was also sent to me. This dress here. Yep. Okay, I think it's For this one or the other. This one and this the one. picture that we were. Okay, so this is. What, I think this is one of the photos we used. Um, we won't say the c word there. Uh, okay, so it looks here, but you you haven't tagged anyone. So how how does this relationship work um, with the your your client? I, for this one, uh, they sent me the product. Uh, I got paid, and I just gave them professional pictures, and it was completely up to me if I want to post the picture ah, with their product. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to tag them. Now you have to go out and do the photography yourself and give them the photos. You have to do the Photoshop. You have to clean it up, mm -hmm. and then in return you get mm -hmm. the dress. So I'm getting the dress. I'm getting money. They're getting professional pictures. Basically, it's like. If you would come to the company to make a professional photo shoot, yeah, but yeah. they're just sending it here because I have everything to and do. And it makes myself. it simple. And then there, but there you don't give them a tag. Is that just uh, how you were feeling that day, or um, why, why? Why? We're on, discussing on that before, before they're sending the products. Okay. So, if they want the pictures, is one thing. If they want the, me to tag them on the post, is a different story. Okay. So different agreement. I'm basically I'm getting. Um, 50% of my income just from working as a model. So yeah. like they're getting my body and my face. Yeah, it's enough. <laughs> it's like, all right, that's that's all you get. What about, um, all right, so at least you can, you can close that. I think we get that. What about doing any work with um, uh, like uh, affili uh, affiliate marketing? Do people reach out to you for that where they're giving you promo codes to push so that if product sells, you're making X percentage on your, your, your affiliate marketing? I've tried that before, but I'm not a big fan of being, let's call it ambassador. Okay. Like, uh, nah, I don't want, I don't want to spend extra time on thinking how to push that exact product or that exact page because I have me and I have my own brand. So. And your time's limited. And yeah. So I'm spending a lot of time on that and I really want to have rest. I want to sleep at night. So yeah. I'm, I'm not bothering myself with that too much. This this work and and not just the insta like the modeling, the Instagram, the OnlyFans. Like, how many hours a day are, do you feel you're working? Really depends on a day because some weeks are really busy. Because, for example, this week we're gonna have about three shootings, and okay. some weeks are really empty. But usually throughout the empty weeks, we're uh, editing the photos, looking for new clients, or like texting to the clients. There. Are uh, they found us before. OnlyFans is just everyday work. So pictures for OnlyFans, uh, you have to also plan it, think about caption, because caption there matters. Really? Like, really matters. For, depending on how do you push the photo. Like, I used to have a photo when I'm, like, uh, covered in Oreos. Okay. And it was, like, um, a spelling mistake or do you want some cookies and come i mean, I mean cream <laughs> so <laughs> okay so you have to you ha the captions are important those are kind of the taglines that the followers are going to see that's yeah, going to so drive the engagement see your personality that you have yeah. like a sense of humor that you're talented at something so like dancing really helps mm. because for example i used to do pole dance for a while so pictures on the pole when you show off your flexibility people are like wow <laughs> And I love that. where are you able to, I guess there's many studios you can go to here to, gr to grab those photos anyways. Yeah, um, <coughs> usually we're using whatever we have on hand. Like I'm using my condo, I'm using photographer's place, any friends that have like white walls or whatever. Mm. Um, you can create a studio like this. You just need a light. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Here uh, is a lot of effort. But yeah, we've got a lot of effort in this. But. Yeah, I mean, as long as you have the proper... Do you have the proper equipment, cameras, lighting? Okay. Yep. I got lucky with the photographer. Shout out to, D to Dima. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Dima. We don't. We got too many cameras here to look at, but we'll, we'll give him a tag. We'll, yeah, uh, we'll tag sure. him in this. and he He's a genius. Maybe get some... Um, the latest pictures home. were... Most of them are mm. he took for me, so I'm really happy that... Are you, is he he's Russian as well, or...? He is Russian, Um so, but he speaks English, and I'm always here as a translator. So, oh, okay. Well, we'll tag him, and uh, we'll put it in the. Uh, we'll put that in the descriptions. Actually, we'll plug it again. We'll plug this all at, again at the end, um, just so that we can explain it to everyone. 
Um, uh, a couple of points I like to discuss with everybody that comes on the podcast is uh, just a couple more questions, and it's not that crazy. Uh, I think we covered a lot, especially in the OnlyFans, and, and connecting that. And I was also interested to understand how does this work? How do you monetize that? Um, the first question is, everything now going on, since you, you've kind of taken that step back from school and you're focusing on your modeling and the Instagram, and again, congratulations, you've, you've scaled it in about a month and a half to 10,000, which is, I mean, that's quite, it's, that's no easy task. Plus the OnlyFans, are you comfortable now like it, it, with this lifestyle and it's it's beyond paying the bills like you're com comfortable you you can uh it's something that truly if someone also took that on and you were a point of inspiration they could they could pursue this and and it could be a career path basically i saw how it works first i saw that people are able to paying all of their bills and live a comfortable life working just on only fans and then I thought I can try it, and if it works out, I'll keep it as a as an extra income. But we all understand that uh, using our body is something temporary. So, like till the age of thirty, okay, I'll I'll go to gym. I'll be beautiful. I won't have any wrinkles or whatever. Yeah. But at some point, your body won't satisfy anyone anymore as much as it was before. But father, well, time catches up. Yeah, the time catches up. Okay, uh, but. As well as you can, why not? So yeah. it's like, it's an extra, like, for example, imagine if you're losing your sight. So I will go around the world to see everything when I can, instead of just sitting and waiting when I die. So it's kind of like that. Any male or female, I'm sure there's, there's probably male only fans as well. I, yep. I'm sure there are. Um, I'm thinking about taking it up. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not. Talise, Talise, you're the photographer that for that, eh? No, no, no. Um, no, thank you. For um, for any anybody out there that's possibly listening to this, um, and, and we will clip this and put this together, uh, like food for thought, inspiration. Um, what would you tell them if they were looking to just start on Instagram, to start on OnlyFans? What is your advice to get started? Step one, step two, step three, and it doesn't need to be a 20 minute answer, but Okay, so step one, understand what you want to do. Step two, ask yourself why you want to do it. And step three is how far are you ready to go to reach your goal? Mm. That's it. That's basically it. Don't be afraid to try. No one's going to kill you for asking. No one's going to kill you for trying. Just think before you do. And when you do something, make sure that you want to do it. That's it. And, and like you mentioned before, don't be afraid to ask for help and reach out into the community Definitely. in case you feel you feel lost. You don't need to do it all on your own either. Of course, yeah. yeah. I'm always on the line. There are a lot of people who are doing on the fans that won't be afraid to uh, to help you. If you see a girl with the only fans link or that promotes it, whatever, just text her and ask. If, if not one, if not the second one, the third one will answer you. Yeah. And whoever does that... Um, you can always say no in the middle of the process. Like if you started, the, for example, a girl wants to take a 10% like from your income. If you're not comfortable with it at some point, you can just stop it, but you understand that you're going to do it by yourself. So that's it. Yeah, you need to make, make those right decisions as well. And if giving away a percentage to get started makes sense to you and you're comfortable with that, go with it. But you never ended up doing that. You kind of had help. Uh, I could, yeah, I always have help from the side and I'm, personally help for free just because i've been in that situation when you like i don't know what to do i don't know where to start yeah. so i have someone who guided me to that point and um we'll just jump into kind of the this is kind of the last question um and it's more about phuket and living in phuket and the lifestyle of phuket um what does phuket mean to you since i live here almost for five years phuket became my home but I would say this. This is not a place to grow like massive. If you want to grow online, place doesn't matter. If you want to like study or make a career, you need a bigger place probably. Because tourists, uh, this is like a tourist zone. You cannot really like... It's like a Vegas. 
kind of yeah it's like it's just a place to hang out or for people who've done everything in their life is just just want to spend their last days on the beach so if you're looking for something bigger than just i don't know running on the beach and spending days looking for a job online you i would say yeah not phuket and now like with the the current situation and and everything you know it's difficult to travel and people uh socially going online and and creating a business for themselves um and, and that's what we're we're doing as well i mean is that the argument to that as well specifically for this point in time in the world that going digitally you can pretty much live wherever you want as well um i don't think there's there's much of a we don't need to go much deeper than that that's just my thought process uh okay i think we've we've covered a lot because i'm sure we could talk about only fans and there's people and in, in instagram and go into the details and follows and unfollows and this and that but this is not a technical uh how-to video for for that um for more information uh well first i'll let i'll let anna plug herself so this is your camera here everyone that you want to plug what you're doing next uh where they can find you uh, any information, let the world know. Okay, so if you want to start OnlyFans, don't be afraid. I'm here to help. Anything you want, you can always DM me or ask for my personal contact so I can help you. Um, just make sure that you want it. You can always ask questions before you start it. doesn't really matter. And just let's grow together. That's and it. and where can they find your Instagram, your handle? So we. Uh, do we want people finding you or no? Sure, yeah. Oh, you yeah. can find my Instagram in the bio. Uh, the what? What is it's your your handle is what on Instagram? Uh, Anna. Um. Or do you want to say that? On uh, it's Kessler dot a. Ke- Kessler dot What a. is it? Talise, pull it up. Anyways, we'll put it here, um, in post production. Uh, you can find Anna there, and then from there, link in the bio to uh her OnlyFans and uh be nice in the dms be nice in the comments we have a special giveaway one month one time uh anna's been kind enough to give this away um as long as you're not super creepy and and weird and annoying um then it's fine but we will if this video gets uh 100 likes uh leave a message on the youtube in the comments we'll be selecting a winner uh in the next couple probably at the end of the month because this will take about a week before we we launch this We'll be selecting a winner, uh, let's say, at the end of uh, September 15th. Okay. We'll select a winner September 15th, and that person will get a free month's subscription to her OnlyFans. So go look for that. And don't worry, the winner will not be us. <laughs> um, a special thank you to, hey, oh, at Best Phuket Girls. Uh, This account on Instagram connected Anna and us together um, to allow us to bring this information to you today. So go check them out at Best Phuket Girls on Instagram. We are Fruiting Body Podcast. This is Fruiting Body Mushrooms, doing uh, medicinal mushroom supplements such as lion's mane, turkey tail, and cordyceps. Product will be coming out soon. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Let us know what you thought of the episode. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Thanks, Anna. Good. Really good, really good.